But we're just going to jump right in to the last session of the day. And I'm going to present. And I'm going to share. Ten features you didn't know that exist in Groundhog that will help you increase productivity and get better results. Groundhog is a big product. We got a lot of stuff going on. There's just a lot of stuff. And, you know, if you don't know some of these things, I don't blame you because some of it is undocumented. Our documentation is just in a permanent state of like playing catch up to, to the, the state of development. Um, and so we need to be better at that. I understand that. So this video, consider the, this presentation supplemental to our documentation in explaining some of these really cool features that I think are going to help you a lot. So I am going to just get started here. And why should you know these? Because, you know, we want to work smarter, work faster, and be happier. You know, we don't want to work hard. We want to, be, we want to work smart. And so a lot of these features are just primarily aimed as um, uh, just making your life easier, reducing custom code, uh, improving the ability of how quickly you can work and implement things in Groundhog. Uh, so let's get into it. So number one, control shift and then open bracket. Now, what does this do? So this is a keyboard shortcut that works in like most places in Groundhog and on WordPress in general. And what it does is it inserts or opens up a little replacement code selector. So I'll show you an example of what that looks like. I'll just open up my, uh, my window here. So I've got Groundhog open, and let's say I'm writing an email. And I want to, what's going on here? Uh, of course, there's, a, there's an issue now. There you go. I think we're good. All right, so let's say I've got a button and I add a button to my email and I wanna put in like the confirmation link, but I don't remember or don't wanna type out exactly what the raw confirmation link is. Cause everybody used that because you don't like for some reason, just to confirm your email line of text and whatever. But if you wanna use the raw confirmation link, what you can do is you can just delete that and then you can do control shift and then open bracket. And then it, it opens up this little pop-up and then you can just start typing the replacement code that you want to use. So like confirm. And then there it is, raw confirmation link. And I can use the arrow keys. I don't even have to use my mouse. I can just use the arrow keys, click enter. And then that's going to insert the short code or the replacement code rather for me. So that's really nice. So that works in emails. So I can go ahead and save that. And then I'm going to close that. And it even works in funnels. So let's say I want to do like an add note here. And I want to do an add note and reply to uh, control shift open bracket, first name, tomorrow, something like that. It works in uh, when you send a webhook. So where's my webhook one? Here it is. So when I'm doing a webhook, when I'm making the payload, I can say first. First name, last name, email. So I don't have to go and like open up this and do the copy thing. Like, so that's kind of just like a really nifty feature. So again, that feature is control shift and then open bracket. It also works uh, in forms. So if you want to like pre-fill a form, and this, is, this isn't part of the list by the way, but just another cool feature. Um, is when you're making a form, there's this advanced tab here and there's a value and this value accepts replacement codes. So if you want to like pre-fill the first name field, you can just add first name here. And then if there's a tracking cookie for this contact, it'll actually show their first name there, uh, pre-filled. So that's also kind of cool. So that's another feature that you may want to take advantage of, just saying. But, uh, and also there's a few fields that also show like the little person which basically just does the same thing. It just opens this up, but control shift, 
um, open bracket will open it up in a bunch of different places in the success message. If I want to say thanks for subscribing first name, boom, there we go. Uh, so that is a nice productivity feature. I use this literally all the time um, and it's undocumented. So nobody knows about it, but it's there. Uh, so I highly encourage that you check that out. So let's go back to 10 feet. Let's go back to our presentation here and uh, let's open up the chat. Oh, come on. Nobody's saying that's cool. I should get, I should get at least one. That's really cool. Adrian. Thanks for sharing. Alicia says that's cool. Greg says that's cool. Greg knew about it though. So that's not fair. <laughs> All right. So number two is the, uh, is a setting actually in the uh, default contact tab. So uh, when looking at the contact record, when you open up a contact record for the first time, uh, by default, it opens up with the activity feed, which for me is the most useful feed, so I appreciate it that way. But sales agents might not find that that useful. They, want to, they might want to open up with the notes feed or something. So going back to our CRM here, if we go to the settings and we go to miscellaneous, there is this interface section right at the top, and then there's a setting for the default contact tab. And then you can select between activity timeline, notes, and files. So if I want to select notes, which is currently selected, I can go to any contact record. And it's going to open up with the notes tab by default. So if you do a lot of notes, uh, this will open up first rather than the activity. And then you can always switch to activity after the fact. Uh, so that's another one that people don't really know about um, and can be useful uh, when configuring for uh, sales agents primarily as the primary users. Alrighty. Can I get a that's cool? Actually, I demand that people say that's cool after every feature in the chat. Not actually, but feel free to say that. <laughs> Uh, internal forms, number three. So uh, internal forms is kind of a concept that was carried over from uh, where I was previously in the CRM ecosystem uh, with the software uh, that rhymes with Confusionsoft. Uh, and when we made Groundhog, we're like, well, we should have internal forms. But it always really bugged me how you had to create internal forms and web forms separately because what most people ended up doing is just duplicating a web form with all the fields as an internal form. That got really annoying. And so in Groundhog, we just have them be the same thing. So what you can do... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I want to do a new share. There we go. So when you're in the contact record, uh, there is a submit an internal form button underneath like the main details in the top left. And if you click that, you can select from a list of all of the active web forms that you have in any of your funnels. So I can select like the footer subscribe form even, and it will allow me to submit this. So let's say that you have a funnel that starts off with something and you could go through the process of adding them in funnel. You could also submit an internal form, or if you have like some sort of administration form, you can submit forms on behalf of contacts from the admin UI, and then they get added to the relevant funnel and they get all the follow-up emails for that as well. So this is an option to be able to add additional data if you wanted to, rather than sort of navigating through the custom fields UI. So let, you could have like a bunch of custom fields and you could go through the multiple pages or whatever. Or you could just have a form ready to go, select the form from the dropdown, and then submit it that way. So that could be useful for administrative users that are spending a lot of time navigating in contact records and updating fields. All right, so that's three. Going on to four, merging contacts. Uh, so this was a feature request until maybe six months ago. Uh, and then we stopped getting feature requests for it, but we never got a cool, you can merge contacts. So I don't know if people actually know about this, but it exists and I'm going to show you how to do it. So 
when you are in the contact record, let's say you have uh, another contact that signed up, they're the same person, uh, you want to go to the contact record that has the, the primary information that you want to keep, okay? So uh, the, the, the contact that you do it from is going to be the contact whose information is kept, and then any missing information will be pulled from the other contact record that you decide to merge. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to uh, click on the three dots again in the profile area. And then there's a delete option, but there's also a merge option. So let's go ahead and merge. And then uh, it'll give you a list of contacts to choose from. And you just search the one that you want to merge. So I'm just going to look for my name. I'm going to pick one of the probably thousands of contact words that I have. OK, so I have Adrian. So I'm going to select this one. And then, are you sure you want to merge? This action cannot be undone. And what this does is it merges all the activity, all the funnel history, any upcoming funnel events, all the meta, all the custom fields, everything, which is pretty cool. It's pretty comprehensive. And, when you, and if you want to see exactly what happens and know exactly, then you can click this link, uh, and it'll bring you to the document, and it'll tell you exactly what comes over. So um, here's what happens. The primary contact unpreserved, unless there's missing information, custom fields, all notes are transferred, files are transferred, email activity is transferred, funnel investors history is transferred, site activity is transferred, other associations are transfer transferred as well. So pretty comprehensive. And then we click merge. Uh, and that'll take a second. But not that long. Let's try that again. Or did that work? Did that work? Oh, yeah, that worked. So, yeah, so it added alternate email addresses here. Uh, so not really sure why it didn't uh, redirect, but it did work. So hopefully you don't run into a similar situation. Um, but brought all the information over. And so you're good to go there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, so that is merging context. If you didn't know you could do that, now you do. Uh, can I get it? That's cool. Greg, Greg, Greg is on point with the, with the cool. All right. So stop. And then go back to our presentation. Custom reports, one of my favorite features um, and highly underutilized by Groundhoggers. So custom reports came out soon after the ability to create custom or to create filters with our contact filtering system. Uh, and it's really easy uh, and very powerful. So let's go back to our... Here we go. So what you want to do is you want to go to the reporting area in Groundhog. And then there is a tab called Custom. So you're just going to go ahead and click on Custom. And then you're going to get a blank screen. It's just a blank screen to start. We don't have anything fancy here, although we should. We should have like a Create Report thing. But basically, there's a button here. There's a blue button that says Create New Report. You're going to go ahead and click it. And then you're going to create a report. And I'm going to call it, uh, I don't know, I'm just going to call it People that use Gmail. And I am then going to be able to say, I want to get the number of contacts that fit this description. And then I'm going to select a filter. So the way that the report custom reports works, it works, it gives you numbers in a dashboard based on filters that you can select here. So there's a bunch of filters to choose from, and then there's like WooCommerce filters, and there's different filters, but uh, so you can create a bunch of reports based on, a, uh, like, for numbers of contacts based on any of these. Uh, I'm going to select email address and then ends with gmail.com and then click Save Report. 
And then uh, apparently that's zero people. Which I find hard to believe. I see Google.fr. So let's do people that use Groundhog. Is, well, well, we'll edit it so that we can see a non-zero number. There we go. So we get one. And then you can add as many reports as you want here as well. So you can also add different kinds of reports. So let's say we want a pie report based on a custom field. So I don't know, country. And then we can say we want a pie chart. And then we select a custom field that we want to base that pie chart on. Let's say country. And then you can filter the number of contacts that show in this report, but you can also just leave it blank. So it'll give everybody. We'll click Save Report. And uh, everybody that's reported country so far, which is just me, is Canada for this. Uh, and so custom reports are a really powerful way to create your own custom dashboard to see reports or numbers of contacts at a glance. Let's say you want to see the number of people that have a certain number of, or uh, that have like an, uh, a couple of tags. You'd be able to do that and then see that, come to the custom and just be able to see that. And then of course, all of these, every, all of these reports are clickable so you can just click it and it brings you to the list view so you can actually peruse through the list of contacts that match that criteria. Pretty cool and under leveraged by Groundhoggers. All right. All right is my filler word. I'm not sure if you've noticed that. Cool feature and number six, funnel sharing. Funnel sharing uh, is primarily for like the agencies in the room, but if you're not an agency and you're a small business and you're just using Groundhog for your own company, then sharing templates might come into handy if you're doing like a site migration or if you have multiple sites with a couple of different properties or you know maybe you're working for a couple of companies and you wanna be able to just duplicate. Funnel sharing is really, really, really fun. And very, very, very easy. So when you're going looking at a funnel, so I'm going to go to my funnels area. And then uh, when you're looking at the list view, there's just this export button. So you, I can just export a funnel pretty easily. And then it'll download. And then when I go to add a new funnel, there is an import funnel option. And you are just going to select that file that you downloaded and click import. Pretty straightforward, very easy. And then when you're also inside the funnel, you have the same option to just export it. But there's also this share link. And what you can do is you can copy this link and send it to whoever you want. And you can publish it on your website. You can add it as a download somewhere. But basically, whenever someone clicks this link, it'll download onto their machine the, the copy of that funnel. Uh, and so if you are updating your funnel, this link will always download the current version and export the current version of that funnel. So that's pretty cool. So if you're doing like a template library or an agency and you wanna send funnels to like clients or something, then funnel sharing enables that. So that's also very cool. And then they can download the template and then upload that to their website. Bulk edit. Uh, and we see this a lot of times where people are like, well, how do I change? You know, how do I add a tags to a bunch of users? Uh, and sometimes this can be hidden if you don't know where to look for it. And so I'm going to make it really, really straightforward. When you are looking at the list view of contacts, so we have this, this lovely list view. When you are looking at the list view, what you want to do is select more actions. And then whatever the number says here is the number of contacts that you're going to edit. So let's say I filter this by, uh, let's say, I don't know, name starts with A. Let's pick everyone whose name starts with A. And then I click search. So it's going to pull up this number. 865 contacts start with an 
uh, their name starts with A, I can now edit 865 contacts. So whatever the number says here is the number of contacts that you're going to be editing or exporting or sending a broadcast to you or adding to a funnel. So I'm going to select edit. And then there's a number of things I can do. I can change their opt-in status. I can change who they are assigned to. I can set their location to a, to a specific place. I can apply tags. I can remove tags. I can set custom fields or I can add like some custom metadata. So it's completely up to you how you want to edit at this point. But once you click edit, it's going to batch edit all of those contacts and do the appropriate updates, apply any tags, add the funnels if uh, there are any sort of tag benchmarks associated with the tags that you added. Uh, so that's bulk editing, super helpful uh, if you're doing list management. Um, maybe you got like a bunch of people who are marked as confirmed that should have been unconfirmed or unsubscribed. You can fix that here as well. Or if you have a bunch of unconfirmed people and you meant to upload them as confirmed, you can change that here or unsubscribed, completely up to you. So super helpful. Let's go ahead and go back to the deck. So that's number seven. Number eight is actually one of the options below editing contacts, which is manually adding contacts to a funnel. Uh, I see a lot of people using tags or applying tags to add people to a funnel. That is one option that you could do. Um, but a more straightforward option is to simply uh, add them directly to the step of the funnel of your choice. So if we go back to our contact list, in that same more actions drop down, there is an add contacts to funnel option. If you select that, you can select which funnel you want to add them to and then select at which step you want to add them in the funnel. So let's say I want to add them at the add note step directly. Then I can just click this button and all of those people will be added at that step of the funnel. That action that you selected will process uh, and then they will continue within the funnel normally. Uh, you can also add them at a benchmark as well. The, it won't do anything, but because the benchmarks don't do anything, they just only do stuff when stuff happens. Uh, so, but you can add them anywhere in the funnel and then the reporting will update accordingly. And that is a much easier way than going through like the add tag, remove tag process. So that's an option for you. And just while we're looking at this list, uh, you can also schedule a broadcast directly from this page as well. And you can also export a fragment of the list by selecting the export. So if I want to just export people whose name starts with A, I can click the export selection from here uh, and then choose what fields I want to export as well. And you can also bulk delete people from this list. Saved searches. I've been using a lot of saved searches recently. Um, very, very, very helpful feature for, uh, you know, when you're constantly sending emails to like a segment from a broadcast, save searches come in really handy so you don't have to select tags every time. That can be quite time consuming. So what you want to do is when you're in Groundhog, as soon as I can go back to it, there we go. So when you're in Groundhog, I have this first name starts with A filter, Let's say I just, I'm going to be using this segment of contacts a lot. What you want to do is right next to the search button is a save the search option. Go ahead and click that. And I can say name starts with A. I can click save. And now uh, this search is saved. So let's say I leave and come back and come back to the contacts list. Next to the filter contacts button is a load save search button. If I click that, Name starts with A is now an option I can select. I select that. It's going to update the page with that search pre-selected. And I can even continue to add additional filters or change the original filter. I can click on the name to edit it. I can update it. I can delete the search. Uh, but it just makes it incredibly helpful to be able to manipulate or work with segments without having to like remember what all the filters were and then select them every single time, which can be quite, quite time consuming. And even when you're doing a broadcast, let's say I want to send a broadcast. Oh, I can't do it from here, but let's say I go to the broadcasts page. And I'm scheduling a new email broadcast and I select what email I want to send. I'll just send it now. 
uh, there is the option to search for which contacts you want to use or select save search and it's going to load in the save searches that you have access to and then you'd be able to just send direct, direct, just directly to that safe search. So very, very useful tool for when you are working with uh, segments of contacts that are very common. For example, let's say you wanna select a list of everyone that's only ever had one order on your website, then you wouldn't wanna like open up the WooCommerce filter and then type in one and then check every single time. No, you just wanna have a safe search and be able to load that up quickly. So that's number nine. We're getting to number 10. And number 10 is sort of a unique one that applies to some unique use cases. Uh, and the reason that we have this is because like three years ago, we had a feature request for someone that had some sort of like their business model was they were marketing to kids, but in order to market to kids, you have to have parental consent. And so parents needed to be CC'd on all of the emails and we didn't have an easy way to facilitate that. So what you can do is use the custom email headers feature. So let's head on over back to the CRM and open up an email. Let's open up this one. And on the left hand, this is the drag and drop email editor. Uh, if you are using the other email editor, it's same thing. Uh, there's the custom email header section at the bottom underneath the content. But basically in the bottom left here, there's this little plus button. We can go and add uh, some custom email headers. And what you can do is you can add CC and BCC here as well. And you can also even add or overwrite the two so by default, all emails will go to the contact record that is being processed within the funnel, but you can change the two address from here. So I, if I, let's say they had an alternate email address that I wanted to send it to that they provided, then I could like set the, select the replacement code, alternate, let's say I wanted to do alternate email or something if they had a custom field for that then I would be able to do that here. Or if you wanted to CC, their use case for the reason we have this feature actually is uh, they had a parent email. So it'd be like parent or meta parent email, for example, then all, uh, then the parents would always be CC'd on all of the outgoing communications uh, to the contact of choice, which is very cool. So there's some cool stuff you can do here. Uh, you can also add like additional like custom email headers. I'm not sure what reason you would want to do that, but you could like so you can do that. I don't know why that would be beneficial or valuable in any way, but you could. But mostly it's to override the from the two BCC and CC. So you can add those here, which is very cool. And that is our second last. Feature. There's actually a bonus feature. There's 11. That was the surprise. So if we go to share screen. So surprise bonus feature. We're going to talk about one more. And it's not really a groundhog feature, but I'm going to plug Collarbox. Um, because a lot of businesses or a lot of groundhog customers don't know that we own this. And, uh, and I think it's uh, really helpful and we use it on all of our properties now. We, we acquired uh, a product called Hollerbox from a guy named Scott Bollinger uh, earlier in the year, earlier last year in May. Uh, and we gave it a total facelift and uh, it's pretty cool. And so I'm just gonna do a quick demonstration because you know if you need pop-ups or you need lead gen on your site and you don't like any of the options that are out there, we have one and it works flawlessly with Groundhog. So I'm just going to do a, uh, a quick sort of recap of that. So let's escape from here. And 
Of course, we don't actually have Hollerbox active on the site, so I get to demonstrate how easy it is to install. So go to your plugins area of WordPress, just look up Hollerbox. We can activate it, install and activate. Look at all those five-star reviews, beautiful. And then it's as easy as going to Hollerbox and then adding a new pop-up. And then there's a bunch of just templates. They're just, they're just pre-made, they're pre-designed, pre-layout. They're all uh, mobile responsive, mobile compatible. Uh, so I am particularly fond of just the pop-up with a form. It's just straightforward to the point, simple, easy peasy. It's gonna load uh, the live preview of what it looks like on your site. Uh, and then what you just do is you go through the content and you can select your content. So this one says subscribe. I'm just gonna leave it as is, but you can add your own custom message. All our box rocks. And then we can change the overlay color if we want to do that. Maybe a nice purple, maybe a nice orange because you know it's Groundhog Day. So maybe a nice orange. Uh, we can change the button color, give it a nice deep red. Subscribe or else is going to be <laughs> our button text. There's a custom CSS area. If you want to get fancy, you want to change some, some uh, custom CSS stuff. Uh, feel, you can change the name of the field. You can add some custom, uh, some custom HTML form code here. Uh, you can change if it's in the bottom right and the bottom left. So just very, very simple stuff. Like it's not a drag and drop editor by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not really meant to be because again, like sort of the, the niche that we decided to go with Hollerbox is just fast deployment, low effort, get a pop-up, get it out there. Whether it looks good or not, people are going to use it. I mean, it looks good. Like there's nothing wrong with this design. Uh, you can check mobile responsiveness. We want to check out, oh yeah, so Greg is pointing out display conditions and triggers, which is sort of like, okay, well, how is this pop-up triggered? Where is it going to be shown? So display conditions, lots to choose from. Uh, so if you have Groundhog installed with Hollerbox, then you can actually select by only showing this to like people who are fitting specific segments in Groundhog using those search filters that we talked about. So let's say uh, I only want this pop up to show to people whose first name starts with A <laughs> as an option. So if their first name starts with A, then they will see this pop up. Otherwise, we're not going to show it to them. Uh, so that's something that you can do. I, I mean, it would be much more relevant if you wanted, like, wanted to show a pop up to like someone maybe who had like specific WooCommerce orders or had purchased a product within the last powerful number or within the last certain number of days. Uh, so that's definitely something you could do. Um, if the pop-up was previous closed, we won't show it again. If they previously submitted or converted on the form, we won't show it again. We can show it on specific devices. We can only show it to newer returning people. We can show it up to a certain number of times. And then we can choose what content we actually want to show. So we can select where we actually want to show it. So we can select the entire site, but we can exclude, let's say the 404 page. We want to show it on the whole site, except the 404 page would be an option. Or also, we don't want to show it on, I don't know, we don't want to show it on lessons, and we can just leave it as all lessons, and we don't want to show it on, I don't know, the products archive. Like, so you can do like that. You can also include it specifically on certain pages. Let's say we want to do it on the blog posts page. Uh, we have not like a subscribe to all blog posts option would be there. So super... Uh, flexible display conditions to choose from. And then the triggers, we got the standards we got on a specific page load or, or after page load. So let's say 10 seconds after they open up a page uh, when they click. So you just type in like the CSS selector. So if you have like an Elementor button or something, you would plug in the ID of whatever that Elementor button is. Or if you want to do like all buttons, like if, they're, if you use like a buttons class somewhere, then that would work or trigger once or trigger multiple times. If they scroll a certain percentage of the page, like after they scroll 60% of the page, then it shows, uh, or if they try to leave. So if you know, the mouse leaves the browser, then it's gonna show up as an exit intent, which is you know, super popular as, a, as far as a pop-up strategy goes. 
Uh, I don't have Hollerbox Pro, and I'm not going to get into it. I'm just going to show you the free stuff because it's free. Um, but there's also an inactivity trigger. So if someone is inactive on a page for a certain period of time, it'll also show up, uh, which is kind of cool. And finally, we have name and email address. So that's got to get into Groundhog somehow. And the way that you're going to facilitate that is by clicking on integrations, add integration, and then Groundhog is the only free CRM integration option. So if you're not using Groundhog, well, that's just too damn bad. Uh, but if, you, but uh, if you're using Hollowbox for free, Groundhog is available as an integration option. Uh, and you can select which tags in Groundhog you want to add. So let's say we're going to add the Groundhog Day tag. There we go. And then that tag is just going to be automatically added. Uh, and then first name, last name, email address, any tracking information, it's all going to be automatically taken care of because, you know, Groundhog is smart like that. And then finally, after someone submits, we can say we want to show a message. Uh, we're just going to say thanks for subscribing. And then we can test out our form right here. And then it's going to uh, show us that message maybe. Or not. Oh, it's because I have to, uh, let's do that. Thanks for subscribing. Uh, and so that's Hollerbox in a nutshell. So it is just a really quick, easy, simple way to get pop-ups on your site. Uh, very, very low hassle. There's lots of nice templates to choose from here. Uh, there's even the, here, there's a fake chat one, which is kind of fun. Uh, so let's open up that one really quickly just to show you. Um, you can give it the chat prompts that you want. So there's a greeting prompt, there's a name prompt. So if I say like, hello, what is your name? What is your best email address? And then it's going to, uh, you can say what you wanted to say, select all the prompts, and it's going to integrate with Groundhog as well. So that's a sort of a little fun one. Uh, it's like a little fake chat bot. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of clever. Uh, so that's, a, that's something that's fun. So you should check that out as well. What other templates do we have that are fun? Uh, these are all the free ones. There's yes, no buttons. There's banners. There's slide-ins. There's this one's got the, pro they've got the animated progress bar thing going for it. So... Once it loads, there we go. We've got the animated progress bar thing. So lots of options to choose from. Uh, and it's free. The, so, and the integration with Groundhog is free. And so I'm going to classify this as the bonus Groundhog feature. It's not really Groundhog. But if you don't have any sort of pop-ups or any sort of exit intent, like we have this on our checkout page, uh, it converts at like 20% or something, where like if they're on the checkout page for like 30 seconds that they don't do anything. We say, hey, would you like 15% off? Input your email, they convert, it's great. So definitely spend some time looking at Hollerbox. And now I am going to turn this off. And I am going to head over to our closing remarks. And that's a wrap, people. <laughs> that was sort of like a hard cut from Hollerbox to we're done. <laughs> if you stuck around the whole day, from 8.30 to now, I want to say thank you for your level of deep commitment to spending that amount of time with us and to, to giving our speakers a chance and, and listening to what they have to share and listening to their value. I hope that you got value out of this day. It was an immense effort on our part to, to wrangle all those speakers and put it together, but we're happy we did. We did it that last year. We did it this year. We're going to do it next year because, you know, every year we got Groundhog Day and we got to do the same thing every Groundhog Day because that's what Groundhog Day is all about. If you haven't seen the Bill Murray movie, go watch it. So 
Before we end, I just want to give the official weather report. Uh, it is Groundhog Day, and so we have conflicting reports this year. So Canadian Wireton Willie is reporting an early spring. So for the Canadians, woo you know, not much, much, not much more winter. It is a sunny but uh, relatively frigid day here in Niagara Falls. Uh, so particularly happy to hear about early spring. Uh, for the Americans, though, you're not so lucky. Puxatawney Phil has reported... Oops. Puxatawney Phil, is where I was, has reported a six more weeks of winter. So I am sorry to... to uh, condolences to our American friends. You guys are going to have to deal with frigid temperatures a little bit longer than us Canadians do. And the groundhogs have been right a grand total, 32% of the time. So make of that what you will. I want to send a huge shout out to all of our speakers uh, that shared with us their amazing time and their, their valuable insights. Uh, we, are, we couldn't host this event without them. Uh, they are absolutely essential to, to making Groundhog Day happen. So huge thanks to them. And they, you know, there was absolutely zero incentive for them to, to come and, and, and do their sessions. We didn't pay them. We just, you know, we sent out a call for speakers and like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm open to sharing what I have to share. And so a huge thanks to all of them. A lot of them didn't even make offers and they're just like, yeah, I'm just happy to share. So, so huge shout out to our speakers. Recordings, number one question of the day. Uh, the, this, so this event, like the Zoom Hub is actually going to be available for a while. Uh, I don't exactly know when it closes, but it's going to be available for at least the next seven days. And all the recordings are actually already available. If you go to the sessions, the recordings are available there. So you can go watch those. And they're also going to be posted to our YouTube channel by the end of next week. Uh, and any assets available or any necessary assets should also be available with those. My offer for those of you uh, that don't have Groundhog that are on this call or don't have any of our other products. Uh, so we have an offer. It's Groundhog Day. It's 25% off. Big savings. Uh, if you're an existing customer, you can go renew your license early and use this code. It's very generous. It is the most generous. It is, so we only do 25% at Black Friday and now. So we will never give that for the rest of the year until Black Friday. You will not be able to get this deal. This deal is valid till February 10th, 2023. Again, Groundhog Day is the code. Go use that on any of our products, Hollybox, Mailhawk, Groundhog. Uh, and there you go. That's it. Thank you. I appreciate everybody for, for taking the time out of their day. I know there's other things you could be doing. Uh, and I'm really grateful that we get to do this event. I'm really grateful that... Uh, we have a platform to be able to help small businesses and help agencies succeed and to grow. Uh, and it warms my heart that so many people come to us for their, for, to get their best next steps and in information and to, and to learn. So if you have any questions, you can reach me, adrian at groundhog.io. You can message us on, on chat. You can reach us on Twitter, on LinkedIn. Uh, like Michelle said, the number one thing you got to be is accessible and available. And I am both of those things. So if you need anything, let us know.